Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and uh, today I got Chris Walsh on the line. He's a first-time guest here at Crush the Street, and we're going to be talking about cannabis today. He's the editorial VP of the Marijuana Business Daily and Marijuana Business Magazine. He oversees the industry trade publications, and uh, he's a featured speaker at, at major conferences and events. His website is mjbizdaily.com. We'll have that in the description area, but he's an authority when it comes to this trend and something that we've been covering here at Crush the Street for some time. Chris, thanks for coming on the line with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to uh, delve into the fascinating marijuana industry. Okay, Chris. Well, we're pretty canna friendly over here at Crush, but I got to ask you, what is your typical reaction from people when you tell them on the street that you work for the Marijuana Business Daily? I'll start off there. Well, uh, it, it has changed over the years. I'll say that when when the company started in 2011, there was uh, no serious news coverage or conferences for this industry, and it still had a pretty big stigma. So I left the mainstream journalism world, and I was a business reporter at uh, you know Metro newspapers in the U.S. and Korea. And when I uh, helped start this, I got a lot of interesting emails and texts from former <laughs> colleagues, kind of saying, "What what are you doing? Are you a closet pothead? Are you going to work for like a High Times?" Um, and so when I would meet people, uh, you know, they, they, they were mostly interested. I didn't get a lot of negative reactions, but, uh, people kind of thought it was a joke. Um, they still didn't realize it was a real industry and that's kind of why we started this whole thing. Um, so yeah, that, that has changed over the years. And just to, to give you that perspective, even within the industry, I remember one of the first events I went to a business event in Denver, the, uh, one of the business owners there. I, I went to the bathroom and he was next to me. We were washing our hands and he said, you know, you seem pretty cool. You're not an FBI agent, are you? Um, <laughs> so even within the industry, you know, people didn't know, uh, you know, what to, what to think of other people. Um, they thought I might have been some kind of narc scoping out their business meeting. Um, nowadays, uh, people are pretty fascinated uh, and uh, a lot of times they, they ask me for hiring. So that's, that's a big change. People want jobs in this industry. Um, and so uh, if anything, they're fascinated. Sometimes people will just be a little, uh, um, you can tell the people that might be against it or not sure what to think because they'll just kind of be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then they'll ask about, you know, the Broncos or something. Right, right exactly. Well, we won't, know, we won't touch that topic. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah a lot of unprecedented I guess sectors right now. I mean, we've been covering blockchain here quite a bit and tons of gray area in terms of that. Here we have cannabis that was still federally illegal here in the United States, but legal in other jurisdictions to various degrees. Um, but I would say that we're, we're starting to push the boundaries now where cannabis is a science. And I actually read that. Uh, that there's like 22,000 plus research reports that are now written on cannabis. So it's really taken it beyond just a drug, and now it's a science. So having said that, what would you say some of the biggest news as of lately is surrounding cannabis at the moment? Well, there's uh, that's a loaded question because there is so much going on. Um, to your point, the research and science side, is evolving very quickly and being taken very seriously, not in the U.S., uh, in other countries, with uh, Israel and even Canada helping lead the way. In the U.S., because it's federally illegal, there's a lot of challenges for serious professional research, you know, through universities and and uh, you know accredited labs, science labs, and and the like. Um, so one thing you're seeing globally is that other countries are treating this like a pharmaceutical and they're studying you know what the effects are on humans and putting it through you know clinical trials and and researching what the different strains and different for consumption methods and forms of marijuana uh, how they react to different con medical conditions and to your body in general um, and along those lines we're seeing uh, a big storyline to emerge 
over the past year is the development of a real international market, a business market as well. Uh, you've had a handful, but probably six or seven uh, countries legalize medical marijuana this year, and others took steps in that direction or are about to or are seriously considering it. So you have a lot of now uh, companies doing cross-border deals and partnerships, and you have Israeli companies that are teaming up to expand into the U.S. You have U.S. companies that are going into Canada. Uh, you have Canadian companies that are now exporting marijuana to dozens of countries across the world. And that this has been a very rapid development. So I would say there's a lot of attention in the U.S. on the U.S. market, as there should be. Uh, it's a massive market. It's more developed from a business standpoint in general. But you're really seeing the development of this international kind of uh, movement around marijuana, not only with legalization, but with trade and, uh, and, and on the business side. Um, and then here in the U.S., the big storyline is, you know, what, what is the Trump administration, administration going to do? Um, and we don't really know yet. They haven't uh, uh, done much so far, but that's still lingering over the industry. And then the other thing is the new markets that are coming online, and the biggest being California's recreational marijuana market. A lot of excitement, a lot of opportunity, uh, and a lot of challenges. Chris, I, I would imagine that the international growth is going to put some serious pressure on the U.S. to do something to loosen some regulations or, or even full-blown legalize it. Uh, any insight from you as to where that might go here in the future? Well, I would say if, if President Trump was the businessman he claims he he is and was, and he really understood opportunities and how to position the country to take advantage of them and become a global leader, then he would have jumped on this industry or would be poised to now. We have no indication that he's going to do that. But, I mean, if you look at the global scene, the U.S. is going to quickly fall behind in some areas. Uh, the exports that Canada is doing to all these countries that I mentioned before is amazing how much that has increased. You have companies there that are sh growing and shipping marijuana, marijuana oils across the world, and they are becoming the leader on the global scale of this. They're going to legalize recreational marijuana next year at the federal level. They already have medical marijuana legalized at the federal level. So the U.S. is a massive market. It's much bigger than Canada right now and probably always will be. But when you think of positioning the U.S. from a global perspective, we don't research it here. The testing situation in the marijuana industry here is a mess with different labs using different standards, you know, no federal regulations on anything. And uh, we have some great innovations going on in the U.S. in marijuana. We have a big market. People are developing, you know, retail models and advanced cultivation methods. But from a global perspective, the U.S. is not the leader. And it will not be until there's federal change. And by then, you know, you're going to have some uh, countries that have already filled that role. So I think that you know, when we look at this and we'd say, well, will this, you know, force lawmakers to do something? I don't think so. There's this there's this situation in America where everyone thinks that America and Americans know better than everyone else. So, you know, they're the lawmakers are not looking to other countries and saying, wow, look at all these countries that are legalizing at the federal level. We're not. We should we should start doing this. We should seize this opportunity. They're not doing that. And they they think they know best, and there's still a lot of hesitation and, and the stigma around marijuana, and uh, you know they're really they're really missing a, a tremendous opportunity. Yeah, I suppose it's arrogance, and when you do have the position of being what the largest economy in the world, and the you know you have that strength, you look down on everyone else. You don't think you you need to continue down a certain path or be aggressive in certain areas of business, but. I agree with you. I think this is a huge opportunity that the U.S. is missing out on. And it's good for a state like California. It's good for a state like Colorado, uh, Washington, what they're doing with the recreational side. And it's a shame that we're not seeing that on the federal level. 
Um, and I guess so with that, are you noticing what would have been a traditional conservative to a larger degree starting to come around to, to cannabis and, and being more open-minded to it? Oh, absolutely. Um, that has been a big change in just the last couple years um, that is definitely worth pointing out. Um, you have growing support across the U.S. for the legalization of medical marijuana. In, in most polls, whether it's Fox News doing it or CNN or a conservative organization or a liberal group, um, or a pro-marijuana group, what you find time and time again, whether it's in the north or the south or the east or the west of the country, is that support is typically around 90%, maybe 80 to 90% um, for legalization of medical marijuana. Now, recreational marijuana, we've seen this huge surge in support to. Uh, a couple years ago, for the first time in a Gallup poll, very respected organization that's been doing polls for decades, they found that it crossed that 50% threshold where more than half the country supported the legalization of marijuana in general. And what you've seen alongside that is a new poll released recently by Gallup that shows basically there's been a 15 percentage point increase in Republicans who support the legalization of marijuana uh, over the past couple years. And that's 15 percentage points on a percentage basis it's much higher. So um, basically the bottom line is that, yes, you are seeing conservatives and Republicans uh, who traditionally were against marijuana legalization coming around, realizing at least on the medical side, yes, there are benefits to this. Their constituents want it um, for Republican lawmakers and, as well, and that's kind of forcing the hand of some. But I think everyone's starting to realize, okay, this isn't the demon drug it was made out to be for the last hundred years. Uh, yes, there are medical benefits. And now I think when you look at the opioid crisis, when you look at kind of what alcohol does and people compare that to marijuana, um, I think there's a general rec recognition now that, you know what, um, this is probably a lot, uh, a lot tamer and a lot less harmful and potentially more beneficial than a lot of other things you could get legally. Now, that's not true for everyone. Of course, you have the Jeff Sessions of the world who cling, you know, uh, to this old mentality and, and really aren't open to to any type of view or research or or studies on on marijuana legalization. They want to keep this. They think it's it's still this devil weed that's that's uh, causing people to go crazy and and, uh, you know, de a detriment to society. Chris, so what what would be the middle ground or devil's advocate approach to cannabis. Are there major health concerns or what are the general health concerns in regards to cannabis that you know we can point out here today on the show? Sure. Um, when you look at it from a medical perspective, you know the, re the, the research in this country has not been done to the extent it needs to. So there needs to be more research and even the international research on it has not been to the level of other commonly used drugs for medical reasons. So I would say, if you look at this objectively, um, on the medical side, there really isn't a lot of downsides that I have ever seen. In all the states that have legalized medical marijuana, if the system is regulated, if the industry is regulated, is what you find is that the lawmakers and officials end up expanding the programs, and they continue to grow, and more and more and more patients sign up, and, and regulators increase the medical conditions because they realize that this does provide relief. The one thing we're seeing that's that's uh, kind of not so great on the medical side is kind of the, the claims from advocates or the industry that yeah. marijuana is, a, is kind of a panacea for any condition you have, that it could cure cancer, you know, or, or whatever. And, and, you know, I, I don't know if that's true, uh, but, you know, I think there's some some exaggerations into what marijuana can do on the medical side, but and and it's not for everyone too. It's it's not only is it not a panacea, but it's also not for everyone. But again, as a pain relief drug and and a medication for certain types of ailments, you there there it is all positive. Um, you don't see addiction and the results of it like you would with alcohol uh, or all these drugs that are legal that you can get prescribed from your doctor that people get hooked on and it ruins their lives. Um, 
So on the medical standpoint, I would have to say, even looking at it objectively, and you can ask uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who was against medical marijuana and came around a couple years ago, that there aren't that many drawbacks. The recreational side is a different matter. Um, what we've seen here in Colorado, where I live, where our company is based since legalization, roughly five years ago, um, is mostly beneficial. I mean, you have tens of thousands of jobs, you have you know, tens of thousands of companies, you have um, a, a boost to the economy. I mean, Denver and Colorado are growing rapidly. Seattle and Washington are growing rapidly. Portland and Oregon as a whole are growing rapidly, and they have all legalized recreational marijuana. That's not the reason, but it certainly is not a detriment to the quality of life that many people claimed it would be. People are still moving to these cities for many reasons. Marijuana might be a minor one, but it's certainly not repelling people and, and turning these states into terrible places to live. So there have been a lot of benefits um, on the recreational side. People uh, drink less, too. Mm. We've found anecdotally, I mean, even among the people I know, I was never really into the marijuana scene myself, um, but uh, I know a lot of people who, you know, maybe instead of having six beers on a Friday, they might have one or two and they might have an edible and just chill. Uh, so I think there's a lot of beneficial things that have come around, but to be fair, we don't know enough yet about the longer term societal impacts. Um, you know, Denver and Seattle and Portland all have homeless problems and they have for years, but um, that certainly didn't get better. Some people think in Denver, for instance, that it's gotten worse and they blame it on marijuana. Mm. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if more people are coming here for that reason or they're attracted to that or uh, or there's another reason behind that, but um, then you have things like, you know, there's some uh, there's some evidence that there might be increases in in traffic accidents or fatalities. Whether that's related to marijuana is hard to tell because they test differently for that now than they used to, etc. So we don't know those bigger impacts. I would say the the concerning thing for me would be. Um, you know, the marijuana and, and cannabis products getting into the hands of children or becoming so acceptable that, you know, teenagers are using it more frequently and then, you know, dropping out of school or failing out. I had a, a friend in college who mm. used marijuana a lot and he, you know, basically flunked out. Um, you know, he might have done that with, with or without marijuana. I don't know. But uh, the bottom line is that we don't know. And I think that, you know, that's a concern that every state has to take seriously. Now, as you probably know, when you were going to school, uh, there was the stoner crowd. There were people doing marijuana, you know, 20, 30 years ago anyway. So, again, I, don't, I haven't seen evidence that that uh, there's a huge societal problem. And in some, t in some cases, you see data that shows the opposite, that fewer younger people are using it or that it's, it's stagnated. Sure. So, again, we don't know all the all the results, but there I would say it's mostly been positive so far. But, yes, it's not it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, so with alcohol and tobacco, you have emphysema, tar in your lungs, uh, a lot of car accidents because of people being intoxicated with alcohol, overdosing, a lot of overdose problems with too much alcohol, and brain problems with, again, on the alcohol side. And are we seeing this to any degree with marijuana these sort of impacts or is it is it much more aggressive when you start talking about cigarettes and and alcohol oh there's there's no you can even, not even lump marijuana into the category of, of tobacco and alcohol it is it is so much um tamer on that end and, and the, the negative impacts are so much less i mean if alcohol was legalized five years ago and colorado was the first state imagine the stories coming out mm. over the last five years imagine the stories about you know domestic abuse this person was drunk and did this and car accidents and fatalities and and uh you know ruined lives and addiction um uh you know people dying of alcoholism i mean and, and the media covers that you know and they cover the negative sides of marijuana too and i can tell you since it's been legal here there have maybe been three to four negative stories three to four mm negative wow. stories of there was a robbery at one where the security guard was killed i mean that is ter uh, horrific you know um not not good at all but again that could have happened at a liquor store or a bank you're talking one mm -hmm. um, that i can recall you're looking at um at things like 
uh, you know, crime. You, you're just not seeing the same type of things that you see um, for the health on the health side. Again, we need more data. We need more time. We need uh, more studies done to see. I'm not going to say that this is great and will never negatively impact someone physically. Um, I think brain development in, in teenagers, uh, if they're using marijuana, there are some real concerns that it could stunt that. Mm. Um, but not enough data. But, um, you know, on adults, uh, you know, you can, you, you, people that smoke their entire lives, as you mentioned, you know, die of lung cancer, um, alcoholism, liver problems. What you see with cannabis now is there are about 100 different ways you can take it now. You, wow. can, you, can, ha- you can have a lotion and put it on your skin. Uh, and absorb it that way. You can um, eat it in a gummy bear or in a liquid that you put in in your soda or your juice. And then you, yes, you can smoke it or you can vaporize it. Um, there's there are so many ways to do it that if you're truly worried about your health, um, you know, when compared to smoking, you're not going to harm your body in that way. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, though, we don't know the overall long term impacts, but it, it it can definitely not even be in the same ballpark as tobacco and, and alcohol, even if there are some negative. Yeah, great point you brought up in terms of if alcohol was legal five years ago and what we would be hearing about it. And I just started, my mind just started going down a bunch of rabbit holes and it was a, a great picture for where we are uh, truly with marijuana uh, juxtaposed against something like an alcohol or, or cigarettes. Uh, so yes, and, and to, to compare it to alcohol really quickly, just just for two more quick examples, of those handful I mentioned, there was a kid who, who came to, not a kid, a, you know, a young man who came to Denver and had over, you know, took too many edibles uh, and jumped off a balcony on a hotel downtown and died. Terrible story, mm. terrible situation, but I don't know if it was because of that or other things. Again, that's one of the very few. There was another guy who shot his wife and he was on multiple things one of them being he also took edibles but he was also on other other drugs too so and that's literally almost all i can think of off the top of my head chris so what's the current environment where cannabis is illegal and what sort of products and i guess i'm referring to more of the quality that people are are getting out there getting their hands on in an environment where it's largely illegal well in in the elite in the states where nothing is legal medical or recreational it kind of feels like going back in time to tell you the truth when you live in a state like colorado uh or california um they you know have have marijuana that they buy off the street or they they all have their kind of hookups and you're still like maybe having to go to the person's house and hang out with them for 20 minutes and you know chill in their basement with them and you have to give them some of your stash and when you're buying it and then you leave and you have you know um kind of average or below quality marijuana in many cases um what does that even mean average or below quality uh, well and and that's what i'm getting to the the quality levels in the states that have legalized marijuana has is in, a, is in a different level. It's more potent. You know, it's consistent. You can have different kinds. You have tons of different strains that you can select from. Whereas in, in a state where it's illegal, often you're just kind of getting whatever the person you know has been growing in their house. Um, so it's, it's just completely different. And then in, in legalized states, there's an array of products, which I mentioned before. You can get cartridges and, and have it in a vaporizer like a e-cig. Um, you can, you can get the gummy bears, the lotions, the cookies, the drinks, uh, you can get it in, uh, uh, you know, a hundred different ways that are not available. It's packaged, you know, you, yes, you're paying taxes and yes, you're paying a higher price, but guess what? You get it in a bag with a receipt and you can leave it on your car seat when you go into Target or Walmart. And if a cop walks by and sees it, there's nothing they do. They don't care. Um, it's just it's just a completely different feeling. It's like going and buying anything else, any other consumer good. It's like walking into a Starbucks um, or uh, or your neighborhood market and buying something. Uh, things are branded and they're professionally packaged. Um, they have, you know, a lot, in the rec markets like in Colorado, you can get gummy bears and it shows how many calories they have and the content of THC and what the ingredients are. Um, you know, it looks like looks like anything else. 
Uh, but in these in these illegal markets, you know, it's it's still just kind of whatever you can get your hands on. Now, the other problem with legalization that's worth pointing out, and it could be a huge problem, is just the kind of diversion from the legal states to the states where it's not legal. I mean, you can come to Washington, Oregon, uh, Colorado, and buy marijuana and drive wherever you want after. Um, now, some of them have set limits on how much you could buy, but it's pretty easy to get your hands on a lot of marijuana, go back to where you're from, and say, hey, look at all this cool stuff I have, and, and sell it to people. And that's definitely happening. Mm. Um, and there's definitely also not just the average Joe Schmo who's you know, flying to Colorado or, and then putting it in a suitcase on the way back or driving in. You've also got people here doing it illegally and, uh, and growing it and then you know, basically selling it out of state. Yeah, I, I imagine it's a logistical problem for the regulators, and I can imagine the airports are dealing with it, and especially for a state like Nevada or or Colorado, or you know where people are getting their hands on on marijuana, and then they're going into the airport, and then the TSA slaps them on the wrist, and I, I don't even know what happens. They send them back to the the police station in an environment where it's legal. And they're Actually, they're supposed to be like, okay, what you know, why are we, what are we supposed to do to you? We it's not a, it's not a an issue with us. And I can I don't I'm sure there's a way to handle it, but I I can imagine it creates a problem. It's like a divorced parent, you know, with both parents being on two sides of an argument, and you're trying to discipline your child. Well, just to give you some insight, um, typically is what happens if you are in a state where it's legal and you have it in your carry on bag or whatever. The TSA doesn't care. They don't care. They, they're not they're looking for bombs and a hardcore drugs so there are probably you know 10 percent of the people at the airport in Colorado leaving and they have something in their bag whether it's a wow you know a, a, a piece of candy or a chocolate or, or something else uh, that's infused with marijuana uh, they don't care here they make you throw it out if they find it um, because it's legal here the problem is when you get to where you're going in another state and if they if they find it with you there where it's illegal you might be in trouble some some might just say whatever you're some hippie from you know Colorado and California with your weird laws, uh, but others will enforce their laws. I did hear a story of a professional in the industry who went and accidentally had uh, a little bag of marijuana that uh, he would always carry around and went to a, a state in the south and actually landed and was going getting a rental car and the police came up and said you need to come with us we found this in your checked bag. This is the only time I've ever heard of this, wow. and the the person was got got off with a warning, but the the sheriff there or the policeman didn't even know what to do. Like he was just, and the person showed their medical marijuana card from the state they were from, and it looks like a regular ID, like a license. Sure. And and the the policeman was just baffled. Um, <laughs> you know, just was like, I don't know what to do. So ended up letting the person go and throwing it away, even though the laws are strict there. So. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. There's still it's like you're going back in time, and even the cops don't even know what to do half the time. I'm sure most of them don't even care. I wouldn't want to try it in a state that it's not uh, accepted, but I'm sure a lot of them are indifferent about it, especially just as the the times are just changing. They, so, they have changed significantly. Chris, it's been a pleasure having you on Crush the Street. If people want to learn more about you and the work that you're putting out, please let them know where they can go and what they'll find. Yeah, go to mjbizdaily.com. Uh, that's M as in marijuana at the beginning there. And uh, that links to everything we do. We cover the industry day in and day out from a serious business perspective. Uh, and we have market research reports. Yes, those do exist for the marijuana industry. Mm -hmm. And we host actually big business conferences. Our next one in Vegas is next week, and we're expecting uh, 16, 17,000 business people wow. there. So um, it, it's, a, it's a legit industry now, and, and you all know that there in California, and you're going to have some uh, exciting times coming up in the, in the next year or two. Absolutely. All right, Chris. Well, hey, thanks for coming on Crush the Street. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.